we've all been there on holiday to somewhere like Egypt and we've seen in some of the shops that they have fake Rolexes for sale. They're usually pretty rubbish, you can tell from an arm's length that they're not real. The dates are stuck on, pieces are falling off, the quality is absolutely rubbish and you usually cut a finger on some of the sharper edges. So you'd think when you're buying privately that you'd be able to use those same tells to make sure that you're not buying a lemon, but that's not true. Fake watches now are getting better and better and we're here to help show you why you need to be extremely savvy if you're looking to buy a pre-owned watch. So why are these fake watches getting better? When the Far East, in China in particular, they've been faking things for a very long time and practice makes perfect. They are even faking the machinery that the Swiss use to make these watches. So the final tolerances are getting better and better. They even go so far as to fake cars. The Land Rover Evoque, for example, has been duplicated both inside and out and sold in China as the Land Wing. So because of these improvements, the differences between the real watches and the fake watches are getting harder and harder to tell. And we're going to show you some of the very, very fine differences between the two. Unfortunately, the differences between the two are very subtle. So we're going to have to show you in extreme detail how to spot the difference between the real and the fake. First of all, we'll start with the case. There's actually no perceptible difference, even with magnification, between the size and the shape of the case. The finishes are identical, polished and brushed. The only real way to tell the difference is by the text between the lugs on the top and the bottom. The crown, again, you're very hard pushed to tell any difference. You have to look right down into the grooves to see that the machining on the fake is slightly more coarse than on the genuine. The bezel, again, is very difficult to tell between the two, with the bezel pip on the fake being slightly more white and the loom being slightly dimmer. On the genuine watch, the numbers in the bezel are applied in platinum via a PVD process, whereas on the fake, the numbers are painted and under high magnification you can see that the paint is shiny and uneven, whereas the PVD on the genuine is completely flat. It's the same story for the crystal. They're very, very similar, with only a very close look revealing that the edges of the genuine crystal are slightly more beveled than the fake. The fake even has a laser etched crown at six o'clock. They're both very, very small, and viewing at high magnification shows that the fakes is slightly more coarse. The reflectivity of the crystals is very similar, there doesn't seem to be any perceptible difference between the glare on the two. But one of the larger differences is the magnifying window, which is coarser on the fake and has a more blue anti-reflective coating, which doesn't do as good a job at cutting out the glare. The rehort, that's the inner edge of the case around the outside of the dial, is more angled on the fake and the engraving isn't as well defined. On the dial itself, the markers are ever so slightly more rounded on the edge on the genuine watch. The font spacing is different between the two, with the M in 300 meters being spaced out further on the genuine. Although the print quality is almost identical between the two, the thickness of the print on the fake is thinner than the genuine, and so the paint itself appears slightly more grey than the genuine. Between the two, the loom is worse on the fake, but only marginal. If you have a closer look at the hands, you'll see that the edges on the fake are more coarse than on the genuine, with the loom being worse on the fake. Now the date wheel, that's the biggest tell between these two watches, and the thing that's given it away, the numbers aren't as centred on the fake, and the print isn't as good quality. Being magnified with the magnifying window, it's easier to see the differences. But even so, the differences are still very slight. If we turn the watches over, even the case backs have the same engraving on the inside. When we take a look inside the watches, it becomes clearer which is the fake. The genuine Rolex, of course, has a genuine Rolex 3135, whereas the fake has a fake ETA 2824. It's actually a, a fairly good copy of a 2824, but is nothing like the 3135. The bracelets tell a similar story, with the links and the clasp being very, very close to each other. Really the biggest tell are the tolerances on the screws, which don't sit as flush on the fake. And the text engraved on the clasps 
isn't as neat on the fake. To show just how close these two watches are, we'll put them on a scale. That's a genuine one, that's 80 grams. And the fake? 76 grams. Four grams difference between the two. So fakes are getting harder and harder to tell and the differences are only going to get smaller. There are even forums out there that cater to fake watch enthusiasts where they tweak the watches with custom parts to improve them, spending thousands on their hobbies. So if you want to buy pre-owned, you need to be careful, especially when buying privately. The best way is to find yourself a reputable pre-owned retailer, someone with a good presence that you can trust, someone that's been in the market for a long time. That's the best way to avoid a fake, is to take the risk out of your hands, because as you can see, it's very, very easy to make a mistake.